Now you should be able to see me now. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, very cool. Lily, welcome to the Kill Stream. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. Well, you're you're welcome. Thank you for coming on. Uh, now I do this with uh, pretty much every uh, new guest, especially new guests. But you know, if a guest hasn't been on for a while, I'll do it again. Um, I ask the guests to introduce themselves. And somebody once told me this because because I, I was lazy. Well, that, no, that's not the case. Uh, I could introduce the guest if I wanted, but I prefer to have the guests introduce themselves. I feel like it tells more uh, about the person, about their journey, uh, if they tell us in their own words. Uh, how they how they got here? Rick okay. Harrison, sixty nine yeah, cent, so one dollars on Rome. Um, she looks a like a mix between Grace the, Thorpe and Ashton Burke. The in girl, the in word girl, which yes. um, that's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I've always been conservative my whole life. I've always Are been you outspoken, Jewish? you know, like off social media. But it wasn't until about a month or two ago that I started posting like TikTok content more consistently. Um, and it was basically just like little rants about everything. So it wasn't all just politics. It was just kind of like, it was just kind of like common sense about things that annoy most people. Um, I had a couple of videos of mine go viral and then um, started, I, I offended uh, black Twitter in particularly. So they came after me. Um, and then the woke, you know, white liberals who can't wait to, you know, try to I don't know, amend the sins of the past by throwing another white person under the bus. So yeah, all, all of this just culminated in in creating this whole firestorm that it has. But I think it's calmed down and we're just kind of settling into, you know, just But it blew good. up. It blew up in a way um, you rarely see. Uh, I mean, we've seen it before, but like just skyrocketed uh, kind of uh, almost overnight, really. Uh, and it's because I'll, I'll say the word I can say it on my show. I'm from Memphis, first off. Uh, so I have the uh, nigga pass uh, that I can say. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, and, you know, I say that word quite frequently, actually. Um, but, uh, you know, it was kind of said in, in my circles growing up anyway, by white and black uh, alike. And, you know, it's all over the radio. It's all over the place. Uh, and you actually weren't referring to a, a black person anyway you were just talking about broke niggas uh in general uh right uh and your point was that that uh women don't really care uh or, or most women don't really care about whether you're a broke nigga or not uh if you're if you're a good guy if you're a good husband a good good partner etc could you expound upon that point a little bit yeah, absolutely. So like you said, it wasn't even meant, like, I'm not a racist, believe it or not. <laughs> but um, no, it was not meant in a racist way at all. I was just, you know, it's just a way of talking. I don't know if it's like, you you seem to, you get it. But I'm from I, Memphis, I know, yeah, like, I get it. <laughs> right, right. And this like generation too, it's just part of the vernacular. Like everybody my age, you know, that's just kind of like what you say. It's almost more of an endearing term. But my point was when after this whole like thing blew up and whatever, I was like, you know what, this is, this is bigger than I thought because the fact that people are freaking out this much over a word, I was like, I've always loved, you know, the ability of the free speech. And I've always considered myself a champion of free speech. You know, I, I don't want to live in fear. I don't want to live, um, you know, with a censor on my own mouth all the time, you know, oh, don't say that or, or, you know, don't express yourself the way you want or don't make jokes or whatever. Um, so I, I, I saw this whole thing as an opportunity to help really push back against all this political correctness. Because, I mean, that's what, when did this all start? It started getting really bad in like the, the 90s, the 2000s. And it's really corrupted America for just, you know, everyday people. Like it, it makes it hard. It's very suppressive. And now we live in this country. And even though we technically have free speech, we're so afraid of, you know, what could happen or if the mob's going to come after us. We lose our jobs. We our life is ruined, which is true. But, you know, I think the more people that just start pushing that envelope and the more people that push against this whole politically correct agenda, I think it's that's what's going to help, you know, solve this problem because it's not even necessarily like, obviously we have legislation that's killing our free speech, but right now it's mostly other people who are censoring each other as we saw during COVID. Yeah, we did see that. Uh, and now it turns out a lot of what was being said then was true and people were banned and careers were ruined and people, mm -hmm. I could just talk about that forever. Uh, permanent scar on people's um, mental health, honestly, uh, what went down during the COVID years. Um, but um, let me ask you, first off, what are a few of the worst things uh, that have happened uh, to you since this uh, all took place? And then I'll ask you about the best things. Um, I would say, 
Um, the worst thing is probably people coming after my family. Like, you know, I, I'm prepared for it myself. I'm not worried about it. Most of these people are pussies that that make threats online or whatever, and they would never actually come up to you and do anything. But that the, you know, people attacking your family, that does suck. I would say that's one of the worst things that's happened. Obviously losing my job, that's a big deal too, because now I'm like unhirable. When you Google my name, it's nothing but like hit piece, hit piece after hit piece. Like anyone in their right mind would never hire me. So that's kind of- I know the feeling thing. by the way, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I would say those are the two worst things. And then people lying, but you know, people are always going to lie. Now, what about the best things? I would say the best things is I've really it's really opened my eyes to how, you know, the world of politics and conservative influencers and all of this kind of works. Like I've met some really good people and then I've met some real frauds. You know, and and it like when you're not in that scene, which I wasn't like I've always been conser conservative or whatever, but I was never like in a turning point chapter in college. I was never in, actually actively involved. Right. I just what I believe. So I would say um, it's kind of nice to open, have your eyes open and actually bar, be able to see, oh, wow, this is how it actually works. The and this slam. is why it's so important for like, into normal people to come together and take this fight and take back the country because the politicians, they're not fighting for us. Now, you you're speaking about some politically incorrect... <laughs> Did we have some politically incorrect yes questions no? here that are sent in by our viewers, so I, I apologize. Um, I'll ask them of you. Uh, you can refrain from answering or you can give an answer or whatever, but they send me money to ask questions, and so some of them <laughs> are not politically correct. I'll, I'll just say uh, we're not known away. for political correctness here uh, on the Kill Stream, and we also have a space open. We'll see if anybody wants to call in. It should patch through uh, as well if people want to call in uh, through the Twitter space call in line now um <laughs> again these are not my questions these are these are questions from the audience and so uh take take it for what it's worth i always preface it uh like that but um okay now let me see let me go back here uh question for the guest now again you, you can answer or, or take a pass Question for the guest, are you Jewish? That's the first question. Then the second question is, have you taken Jewish money? And then uh, he said, yes or no answers only. He's going full lawyer here. Uh, and you can take it for whatever you want. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a no on all those. Uh, now, why do you, you know, I, I had seen somebody say that about you. And then I saw you say that wasn't true already. Sent three dollars on um, how much to get Lily in that beer? But bikini? why do you think that people were saying that just to like drag you down or, or put a certain label on you or? I would say half is delusional schizophrenic retards. The other half, they want to call me a psyop, but the fact that these kind of people are trying to discredit what I'm saying, trying to discredit me and my platform and whatever, that could, that's a psyop. You know, it's a way of taking down a conservative by discrediting her by it's like how the CIA came up with conspiracy theorists to make to make anybody like Alex Jones who has a conspiracy theory seem crazy. So yeah, I was talking to somebody and he was like, well, that's the psyop. So I think a lot of it is just, you know, people, I mean, people work really hard for their platforms and they work really hard for their following and whatever. And then I overnight get a ton of followers. Like I didn't ask for that. It just kind of happened. Sorry. But I think a lot of this is just kind of people being like, what the fuck, man? You know, she she says one word and, and we've been working so hard and she gets all these followers. So I think that could have something to do with it as well. I think it probably it probably does. And like I said, I've said that word many times and <laughs> didn't get a bunch of followers off of it but I, I have a good number of followers and it, it's like you said you know I've been working at this uh, for a while and sometimes I think you know sometimes you see somebody pop up obviously you know you're attractive female and uh, she pops up she says nigga and it's like oh uh, she blew up it's like I've been working hard for so long and yeah I, I could see I could see some of that I could see some of that uh, yeah. rubbing off there on people the wrong way uh, now let's see uh, <laughs> Rick Harrison also said Kill the gray bar. He's talking about the goal, by the way, not you. Uh, the goal for the show that you can see on the screen. I won't read his whole copy pasta, but uh, huge asshole proving his uh, his name here. And again, this has been said. You don't have to answer 
either which way, but it'll lead into my next set of questions about turning point and IPAC and all that stuff. Uh, but uh, did you let Jake Shields hit yes or no, is, is what they said there. No. I went up, um, obviously no. Um, I went up <laughs> to IPAC, and obviously it's in Detroit. Like, yeah. I'm getting a lot of hate mail, a lot of death threats from a certain community. And I'm going into the belly of the beast. So when I was invited to uh, join him and a big crowd that was going with him. So, you know, obviously I had to tag along with my escort because that was who was bringing me up there and his him and his like team and whatever. They, they were kind of like showing me around. So, I mean, if that constant, if, if that means anybody you hang out with, you automatically have fucked, then <laughs> wow. I mean, <laughs> that would be crazy. But yeah. No, okay. Plus, All right. So, yeah. So we got a yes or no on that. Now, what was your experience? Now, I've watched your video uh, about your experience already, but since you're here live, um, what was your experience? Uh, we'll start with Turning Point USA. Uh, how, how did that go? Um, we, I mean, I didn't really get to see that much of it, to be honest, because like I said, I was with a group, so I had to like tag along wherever they were going. So we popped in there for like a little bit, um, mold around for, I think we were probably only there for maybe an hour, maybe an hour. Um, but I, it wasn't, it wasn't at all like what I expected. It was just like a lot of vendors set up or whatever. Um, I, yeah, it was kind of odd. I, that's not what I expected. Um, now the people that were there, they were like good, you know, working American people who were there and they were all like pro Trump, let's go baby. Let's take this country back. Um, but it, it just kind of felt like a, like a yard sale, if you will. Yeah, so it was it's like, like you know what I mean? Like everybody yes. was just set up and I was like, what is going on? But I was like, okay, cool. So I don't really have that much of an take because I didn't hear any of the speakers. I didn't hear any of that. We just kind of went in there, walked around, talked to a few people and left. So. All right. Now here, here goes another Rick Harrison, super chat. I, Rick, I, I, look, I, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to read that one, but thank you. <laughs> like I said, not politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> on the kill stream but um what you describe is correct uh at these big uh tpusa and and not even to trash them or whatever but people pay money uh for those booths and then they sell shirts or they sell buttons or make your pledge here and sign up for this team or whatever uh and so they're there to basically make their money back because they they rented a booth it's like that at other conventions too but um yeah it's kind of run in the same way that you would see like a, a comic con or a wrestling convention or something right like these people pay money to to have a booth spot a booth slot and then they are selling their wares or selling their you know products or whatever uh so it's yeah. it's kind of yeah, it's a little. I don't know if distasteful is the word, but it's 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 a very it's it's about making money, <laughs> right? Like right. right, and that was kind of my takeaway. Like again, I've never been to conventions or anything, so I didn't really know much about that. So maybe this is how they're all run. But I I thought it was a little odd. Yeah. I was like, well, they're they're not really providing that much for the people who like came all the way up there because it's expensive to travel. You know, you got to get a hotel, you got to get flights, all that. But yeah, I don't yeah. really have that much. To be honest, now it is expensive. Now we'll get into the other part of that topic in a second, but I, I've, I think I've seen. Uh, okay, I've seen two of these now. How much? <laughs> they're the same from Austin A Bear, Austin A Bear, and Rick, uh, Rick Harrison, uh, sixty nine. By the way, if we hit the goal today, it'll be the 69th straight show uh, that we hit the goal. So that'd be quite a streak, uh, maybe unprecedented in, in Killstream history. But um, how much to get Lily in that beer bikini? And they both said this. <laughs> They both said the same thing. Uh, first off, explain the beer bikini uh, and, and just what they're referring to. Okay, so that was – okay, so when this first blew up, um, the, the guy, the, the conservative dad guy, he, like, DM'd me, and he was like, hey, I love what you're doing. I'm going to send you a case of beer. Maybe I'll throw in a swimsuit too. And I was like, okay, cool, thanks. That's, a, that's cool. Um, got the beer and whatever, and I was like, okay, it's a non-woke company. It's like I don't really know anything about them. I was like, that's pretty good beer. I'll give them a shout out. So yeah, I actually did not make any money on that. Really? Rick Harrison, sixty nine cent two. So I, I was sitting there thinking they probably no, cut you a fat. You the bus, but this just goes to show what a terrible business person I, know, I am. That's what I was thinking. I was like, wow, you're one of the hottest things going right now, and you didn't get a fat check off that. Like that I was just, like, if that doesn't prove I'm not Jewish, I don't fucking know what. That <laughs> The first thing I thought was, oh, wow, okay, they, they cut her, you know, at least, uh, you know, five, ten grand or something like that. At least. <laughs> that video fucking blew up. Too. I know. Like, 
Oh, it was worth me. more than five or ten grand. Yeah, that's what I was sitting here thinking. Like, wow, I would just assume that you got paid for that, but you just got a bikini and some beer. I mean, you did get a little payment, I guess. Uh, I but mean, that's what I thought. I was like, that's cool. You know, I'm a conservative. I'm gonna support other conservative brands. And if you you sent me something, sure, I'll give you a shout out. I don't give a fuck. All right, based. Uh, but yeah, I just assumed. Uh, like I think most people probably assume that she that she got a nice little check off that. But uh, yeah, no, I kind of got scammed. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time I'm sure if they come back knocking, uh, negotiate a little tougher uh, with yeah. them because because that thing I think it had like a mil couple million views or something. I don't know. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, it it definitely uh, took off. Uh, and I'm I'm not gonna ask that, Rick. But uh, thank you for the two dollars on on Rumble. Some of these even I. Even I won't ask. Uh, they're, they're just trying to fuck with me mostly. Uh, now, let me, <laughs> let me ask you uh, about your time uh, at AvPAC uh, that actually didn't happen uh, because it got canceled. Uh, you may not know my history. I, I used to, and I'll hold on and I'll, I'll ask this next. Oh, I like that question. Um, uh, all right, hold on. They're rolling in here. Rick Harris. He is just not, you're just not going to stop with that one, are you? I'm you not going to ask. I'm not going to ask that. Okay. Now, he is hardcore. Okay. So I used to be on Cozy.tv, uh, which is like the Groypers uh, streaming platform. I was at APAC 1 and I was at APAC 3. I wasn't at APAC 2 because my mother uh, had had a head injury. She ended up passing away later on. So I didn't do any traveling uh, during that period. So I was staying close by her bedside. So I didn't go to the second one. Um, I had a bit of a falling out, I guess you could say, uh, with the Groypers last summer. Now I dropped the beef and I'm not fighting with them now or anything like that. Uh, but that's that's my history um, with them or else I probably would have been in Detroit myself uh, actually at AFPAC 4 or the attempted uh, AFPAC 4. Uh, so just a little bit of my background there. I probably would have maybe would have seen you there uh, if all that hadn't happened. But um, and again, I dropped the beef. We're not fighting now or anything, but uh, just a little background. Now, what was your experience? Uh, now, of course, the event itself didn't happen, but but you were around uh, some of the I think the party or, or whatever that they had instead. Um, what exactly went down? Right. Um, so, yeah, again, I was the group that I went. We wanted to go. They were mostly interested in going to AFPAC. So. Um, you know, they went there. The event was initially canceled. I can't, I think it was supposed to be held in like a hotel auditorium or something like that. Yeah. And um, so they did like a, like a gorilla um, rally outside of Turning Point and, and Nick like spoke and whatever. And it was like a fun vibe. Like that was actually kind of a fun vibe. It was like, everybody was like, hoorah, you know, America first, let's go. So that was fun. Um, and then they were, they were, there was all this like confusion of, okay, we got to figure out what to do with all these people. Cause you know, they all flew up there and you can't just like screw them over by being like, Oh, sorry, you guys better go home too bad. Maybe better, better, better luck next time. But so they, um, they arranged with some, like, I think it was a bar or something and they had agreed, okay, yeah, you guys can be there. Just know that at like uh i think it was 10 or 11 we're going to turn the music on and then you know just kind of like pipe down after that rick harrison so, 69 um, sent two dollars on. we went there it was a fun time everybody was like getting up and giving their little speeches and whatever um pretty good pretty good vibe uh, and then i had went to the restroom and when i come out everybody is uh heil hitlering or whatever that's called <laughs> <laughs> no wait 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 you're saying they were doing the full uh, Roman salute is another word for it, but they were yeah. doing the doing the full Heil. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, I came out. Of, I went to the bathroom. <laughs> I come walking out, and I'm like, "What is going on?" So that happened, and then after that, <laughs> apparently that was in the contract that you we don't we we want the music coming on at ten. I think it was either ten or eleven, and then we do not want any like. We don't want any Heiling. Is that is that, is that was yeah, part of the deal too? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, those were the same terms that this uh, bar or whatever had set. So they broke the terms of the agreement. So naturally, they got thrown out. So we were then kind of like, that was basically the end of the night. But yeah, it was interesting. Now you've you've caught some heat from those quarters. Uh, why do you think that is? Um, because like, I, first of all, I don't get why they like were so like obsessed with getting me on their team. Like, I'm not trying to join your club. I just went up there because I was like, "Who? what's America first? I'll go and check this out, you know? Yeah. Naturally assuming that America first just meant America first. I didn't realize there was all this other stuff going on. 
but I would say Partner show um, sent ten dollars on Rumble. It was just kind of really? odd. I just kind of gave like, like an, a, an honest of opinion of what I thought. I thought it was a little bit of a weird vibe. I kind of felt like you know I don't know. It was a weird vibe, and I'm just like an outsider looking in, especially as a girl too. So I then like kind of gave my honest opinion, and then I had them really coming for me, like they were exposing like the fact that I had a kid and I had kept that quiet because I've been getting death threats and I didn't want the mob to like then know I have a kid so then they can come after him. So it was to protect him, obviously. So that pissed me off. Especially when I went up there with like an olive branch and I wasn't I wasn't trying to like do anything. I'm not trying to join your club. I'm not trying to whatever. I just wanted to go there and see what everything was about. So that ticked me off. Um and this particular group like they basically want you to be a cuck and not let you get, let them run all over you and you can't say anything against it. Well, that's not how I am. Like if you're going to come for me, then it's war, baby. You know, like you, you expect me to just sit down and grovel and let you shit all over me. Fuck no. So I kind of stood up for myself. And then, so that naturally that made people very angry because how dare you stand up for yourself? You should just take all the abuse. All right. Now, uh, I have a couple of questions here, and we may get back into some of that uh, in a second. I saw you said they that they put a pic of your son out there or something like that. Um, now, they said it was from Instagram or whatever. I don't know. I, I've seen some of the back and forth on both sides. Um, but um, I, I see uh, a, gr a griper, it just says here, uh, on, a, on a super chat. It says, if you had to change one thing about Trump's campaign platform, what would it be and why? Um... Okay, the things that my beef with Trump is he really fucked over the Jan 6 guys. Like, he didn't fight hard enough for them, in my opinion. I wish he wouldn't have been pro the vaccine. I wish he wouldn't have pushed the vaccine. And I wish he would be more, like, America first. You know what I mean? Like, I wish he would just be more isolationist. Like, the rest of these countries can go fuck themselves. Like, we need to focus on America right now. So if I was him, I would really, Rick I would really Harrison, lean into America so. first, you know, because people are sick of this shit. We're sick of all these wars. We're sick of our bank accounts being raped about to send money to other foreign countries. You know, we're sick of this shit. We don't want our boys going and dying on foreign soil. I think he should just lean into that. And um, I think he should really focus on immigration as well. Like, you know, we're going to get these people out of here. We're going to, we're, he needs to go back to 2016 Trump. I think he's gotten a little soft um recently but he needs to go back to like balls to the wall you know america first um we're gonna get the j6 people off we're gonna really help them so i think he needs to lean into the america first more yeah i don't i don't disagree with that more 2016 trump uh would would be a good thing um i, I do think the debate was an absolute collapse by biden but i i noticed even at the debate and i haven't said this yet but um you know he's been talking about full amnesty full pardons for everybody uh, they got caught up in January 6th. And then at the debate, he was like, well, some of these, some uh, involved with January 6th, you know, shouldn't be there. And I was like, that's kind of a, that's kind of a slight pivot, right? Uh, just free them all, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and there's been some Supreme Court decisions that, that have shown that these were like massive overreach already on a lot of these charges. And people spent long periods of time in jail based on, um, bullshit right uh bullshit interpretations of, of these obstruction of justice statutes and there was another law i can't remember now uh that they used to, to prosecute a lot of these people and i you know i'm not an attorney but i would imagine some of them might have nice lawsuits uh going against the federal government now uh if they were falsely in prison but um we'll see i don't know how that would work out exactly but but yeah i noticed he did pivot a little bit uh, on that during the debate and i didn't like that like most of else what i saw from him from the debate but i, I noticed that and i was like mm, that's a little bit off from what you what you've been saying at these rallies i was like uh okay uh now ryan harkness is here uh and he sent in a super chat uh and he said and shout out to ryan harkness he's been a guest on the show he says he may have be being a little bit of a smart ass, but he said, Lily, with a, <coughs> excuse me, Lily, with a mind like yours that has the insight of a Dochevsky and the biting conservative commentary that of Sir William F. Buckley, how will you move forward with the torch that has been passed to you? Um, well, I mean, at this point, the thing is, I don't really have any other path to go. And I'm kind of glad, like opportunities, God, God opens up opportunities in your life and you have to take them. And I've always been super passionate about like this country. I love this freaking country. I love the ability, the freedoms that we have that you don't have in other countries. 
And, you know, if I could maybe use this platform, because I think I connect with just like middle America, because that's who I was. I was never really politically involved till now. Um, and if I can get middle America off the damn couch and get them riled up, because we've got all these, we've got, you know, the people who are politically involved and they're just too busy fighting amongst themselves and whatever that the they're never going to get anything done. So if I can be able to wake up middle America, get them off the couch, wake up, rile people up that are my age, I think I'll be winning. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, right now, all I care, my biggest thing is freedom of speech. That's what my whole platform is about. I mean, even this whole thing that started the whole controversy or whatever, that was about the ability to say whatever the fuck you want, no matter who it quote offends. Cause it's not about offending somebody. It's not about being racist. It's about, I have the right to say whatever the fuck I want because I live in America. And I agree with that. Now, I actually <coughs> am an American, but I live in Mexico, uh, in the Yucatan Peninsula, where there's a hurricane <laughs> uh, headed here uh, later this week. So hopefully uh, uh, we'll, we'll be able to do a part two unless the hurricane takes me out uh, sometime down the line. But uh, I see another super chat uh, from Groper, and he says, The older generation of conservatives seem to be very pro-Israel and in favor of wars in the Middle East. Why do you think that is? I think it's just because that's how conservatism has been for a long time. If you think of like typical conservatives, like I, that's how I was a while back. Um, you know, typical conservatives raised in the church. It's like, you know, you support Israel, you pray for Israel. Israel's our greatest ally, whatever, whatever. I think the new generation, we're waking up to the fact that, you know, first of all, I don't want a fucking ally. It should be, we should just focus on America. Like, what have these people ever done for us, really? You know, so I think I think the older generation, it's just that's just they're believing that because that's just what they've been taught. And that's what they've always believed. So, yeah, I mean, I don't really know, to be honest. I'm not old. Just kind of <laughs> they're just kind of stuck in their ways. Yeah. Uh, I don't really disagree with that. Uh, and of course, they're given their uh, marching orders from certain outlets and, you know, um, our greatest ally right. and this and that. And, uh, I could definitely talk about that at, at length because I don't agree with that take. But uh, I see a caller here, and we'll see if they can get uh, beamed in, uh, and we'll see if you can hear them. Uh, let's see. Okay. Also, unmute yourself, Robert. You're live on the kill stream. Now, oh, I'm sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Now, first off, Lily, can you hear him? Yes, I can hear. Okay. All right. Go ahead, caller. Uh Okay, well, it's not very often we have a female guest to a uh, question on the kill stream. Um, I believe Ralph mentioned that you followed him uh, before you blew up. Are you a viewer of the kill stream, or did somebody <laughs> tell you that Ralph's the guy to sort of uh, get an interview from if you wanted to make it somewhere in this field? Okay, to be honest, I never actually watched the show, but I had seen a couple tweets of yours, and I was like, this is this guy's like funny and based. So I don't really put a lot of thought into who I follow. I'm just like, if I like what I what you have to say, I'm like, hell yeah, I'll follow you. Like I don't care if you got ten followers or like two million, you know. Very cool. Okay, I am um, um, based. Uh, go ahead, caller. Thank you. <laughs> I guess uh, second, uh, another question would be. Um, what do you think the biggest problem between uh, males and females today? Uh, I'm old. I got kids. I'm married happily. But I noticed that a lot of the younger generation don't seem to be getting uh, getting the hose pregnant, so to say. Um, what's the great divide there? What's stopping us from, uh, you know, repopulating, in your opinion? Well, I, yeah, that's a good point. Like, I would say a lot of it, there's, there's two sides of this. I would say half, one half of it is there's a lot of people let it, that are online, they're gaming, you know, they're watching porn all the time, they're jacking off, so they don't need to go out and get girls. Like if you're, if you're being, uh, if you're satisfied through porn and whacking off or whatever, then why, why go out and, and bother to go out on a date? It is a pain in the ass going on dates. It is a pain in the ass trying to go find people. I get it, you get lazy, you wanna go home. So I think that's a big problem. Like guys don't really have that drive just because they're able to find other outlets for that. But that, I would say that's half the problem. And then the other half of the problem is we all know like how destructive feminism and all that has been. So that's made women be like, oh, fuck the man, whatever. And then conversely, you have on the other side of feminism, you have like, I don't even know what you would call it, but it's, a lot of these like red pill people seem to be the, the equivalent of feminism, but for men. So it's a lot of like pitting men and women against each other. Like we're not supposed to be enemies. We're complementary, you know, like I think dudes are awesome and dudes should think girls are awesome. And we shouldn't have this like divide where we hate each other and we feel like we're enemies because we're not, we're complementary. But 
I would say the feminism and the opposite of that has done a lot of damage because it makes guys be like, yeah, bitches do suck. And then the feminism has made girls be like, yeah, fucking dudes suck too. Like, fuck them. I'll just be a lesbian or just hold up in my room. Or <laughs> Go ahead, call you got anything else? Uh, yeah, I guess um, I agree. Feminism has kind of like destroyed everything. Guys are just kind of afraid to talk in the talking to girls in general um it's really easy you just do it for my final question you used to be really good at this i'm going to take another shot 34b now wait a minute what well you can is that, is that uncalled for if it is i mean she can answer if she wishes but he she's well, guessing. this is how you talk to women this is how i did it well i look fuck feminism if she wants to answer she can uh he was oh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna force anybody to do anything it's simply a question 34b in the ballpark uh, where am i at all right 34B. oh wait, wait, wait 34b are you talking about like bra size dude i was so confused yeah he is <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you just gotta talk to him fellas I have, I have no boobs so thing hopefully when the jews start paying for me i'll buy me a big old rock <laughs> that's one of the first things they upgrade up say <laughs> <laughs> thank you robert i appreciate you calling in brother you have a great one uh ralph good show as always you too and thank you all right uh let's try another caller here it's not some of these callers look these are not screened so again uh I take no responsibility for what they may or may not say. Um, uh, let's see. Manny Muskets, unmute yourself. You're live on the kill stream with Lily. But you have to unmute yourself or else we can't hear you. And it still has. Now you can. Now you can. What's up? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. I can hear you. But you can't hear me. I can hear you. Yes. Okay, uh, really? Grow I percent five dollars. Do you understand? Okay, yes. go ahead. There was a super chat my, coming my in. Laptop's could, crazy could, could I just wanted to know, go ahead. Lily, um, have you never dated a broadcast speaker? A broadcast I, I N word, <laughs> he meant, of course. Uh, th thank you for your question. I I'll let her answer that. Uh, have you ever dated uh, a broadcast N word? <laughs> I have dated lots of broke ass people, but I've never bro dated a broke ass nigga. <laughs> nigga in the color nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're throwing down there. Um, okay, now. Uh, also, I was going to ask you, because uh, I can hear a southern accent, so I was going to ask you where it's from, but then I found out while you're talking, North Carolina uh, is what it yeah. said. And that, was that correct? Yeah, I can hear yeah. it. Uh, I spent some time. So I'm from Memphis originally, so I have a bit of an accent myself, but uh, they're different. So I can kind of pick them out usually, but I couldn't quite play yours. I lived in Spartanburg and Greenville area, South Carolina uh, for a long time. Okay. So uh, I know a little bit about the Carolinas, a little bit more about South Carolina, but, uh, but yeah, I couldn't quite pick it out and I was going to ask you and then, uh, and then I looked it up myself. So North Carolina, that's where you're born and bred and, and where you're from now. Yeah, I, well, I was born in Marion, North Carolina, but I, I have four brothers and we were all born in different states. So like, we lived out west for a long time. I was raised for most of my life in Georgia, lived in okay. Alabama so, for a while. So that's why my accent's not really, you know, indicative of one state because I've lived, I've lived everywhere. I don't really have a hometown. On yeah, it was hard to pick Next out. And usually I'm pretty Honest. good with it because I can, I can pick out Mississippi, Texas, you know, the Carolinas, Georgia. Now that you mentioned Georgia, I can hear that uh, in your voice a little bit, actually, the Georgia accent. But I couldn't quite place it because it was, it was it was southern. I could hear the southern accent, but I was like, mm, I'm usually better at this. Uh, yeah. So okay, that that explains it a little bit. Uh, now, let me ask this question, uh, Rick. Thank you, by the way, for that last super chat. Um, I <laughs> we'll just let that sit there. But uh, Groiper. <laughs> Groper says, do you understand the Groper's point of view of not wanting women involved in their political movement? And then he says, women are a distraction in a group of men. I mean, I would, I would say like, I've always been against women being in like, um, position, like uh, political offices, just cause they, there is the distraction there. It's the same as like women in the military and the army. Cause it's like, if you've got a girl there, like she's not going to be as strong as the rest of the guys, the dudes are going to be trying to like either fuck her or protect her. So that's very disruptive right there. You know, and I would say, yeah, I agree. But this is my point. 
I don't get why you guys were mad at me being there because I wasn't trying to join your group. Like I wasn't trying to be a griper. Why would I want to be a griper? I'm a girl. Yeah, I guess I guess some people took it that way, uh, that you were trying to infiltrate or whatever. And, and you're saying it was more of just doing the rounds, basically, right? Checking out everything. Yeah, and... exactly. I didn't know about any of these. Like, I knew about Nick Fuentes, obviously, but I didn't really know about the whole, like, Reuper culture or whatever. I had heard about AFPAC, and I was like, oh, cool. I got invited to go to AFPAC. I'll go and see what's up. But I wasn't, like, trying to join anybody's group, obviously. Now, um, what do you think about Nick Fuentes? I mean, I don't really have that many thoughts, to be honest. I didn't meet him there, um, and I've never, I've never listened to his show or anything. I would say he has, like, solid points. I agree with a lot of things he says, to be honest. Rick Harrison, but, um, 69, said yeah, I don't really know much about the guy personally. Hitler or Prince. Okay, fair enough. And fair answer. And, okay, fine. They sent in. Okay. So this is going to seem weird, but um, there's a famous question on the kill stream. It doesn't get asked of every guest because I usually make somebody super chatted in whether I ask them that or not. And since he's super chatted in so many other uh, off color things that I did not read out because even for me, I won't read those out. Um, but um, I will ask this one and it's been asked of almost everybody you can imagine uh, like really high up politicos down to the lowest drama hound. Uh, and I, f I forget who exactly came up with it, but it's been years. It's like five year old question on the kill stream. And it's who would you rather meet Hitler or Prince, the singer. And they're both dead, of course, so you can't, it would be a metaphysical, you know, something would have to happen. Um, for him. I mean, to be honest, like, I always thought Prince's music was fucking lame. So at least, like, Hitler's more interesting than Prince, so probably Hitler. Okay, fair point. And I've, I've had, I've had all different. It's kind of like a, it's not, it's not, it's like a litmus test question in certain ways. Like people have justified who you wouldn't expect wanting to meet Prince over Hitler, actually, too. So it's kind of, yeah, I've had some people uh, answer Prince, and then of course some people pick Prince just because. Well, I mean, that's the safer uh, option, right. just say Prince. Uh, but a lot of people have used the same reason you did, basically. Well, Hitler, a pretty interesting guy, <laughs> right? Like a lot of people yeah. talk about it, like I, I might have more questions uh, for Hitler versus Prince. So, yeah, I've, I've heard that reasoning, too. Um, now, what have you been doing on your own? Are you planning to start any shows or, you know, I know you've been doing a lot of videos and you're, I, I don't know how big your TikTok is, but I think it's fairly large as well. Um but what are your plans yeah. coming up? I mean, right now, like I said, I'm just trying to figure out how this all works and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to be starting like, long, I have like a rumble and a YouTube or whatever. But the, the thing is like, unless I completely change like who I am and how I talk, cause I have no filter. I'm just going to be banned on all these platforms before you know it. So I'm probably going to have to start doing something a little bit more alternative to that. But yeah, we're just working to see what, what's going. And in the meantime, I'm just like putting out content and just, you know, just saying the same things I've always been saying. Yeah, I will say, you know, we're live on Rumble. They let us uh, they let us get away with just about, <laughs> shouldn't say this out loud, but almost anything uh, within, within certain reasons. Like, they don't ban you over saying uh, broke-ass nigga, for instance, uh, or anything like that, or even other versions of <laughs> Uh, of the word but uh but yeah they're pretty good about it here on rumble but yeah i could see starting up your own thing too uh because that kind of inoculates you uh and, mm -hmm. and really lets you fly and trust me i've bounced around i used to be on youtube we had the number one late night show on youtube and i did this fundraiser for saint jude which is my hometown charity and we got banned for that Who but three dogs? um i don't get the hate towards lily all right now hold on people can accuse her of grift i'll just i'll just read this out myself um, you'll get a personal read through Puar. Uh, and he says, I don't get the hate towards Lily. People can accuse her of grift, but she's put a lot on the line. Sorry to break it to Groypers, but we need women to save the white race. Uh, and then he says, stop trying to scare them off. You fags is, is what he's, is what he said there. Um, thoughts on, on, on his comment. I mean, yeah, that's true. Like, I mean, like, I don't really, I, th I think, I don't understand, like, really why people have so much beef with me, to be honest. But, um, yeah, I mean, you do have to have women to continue the human race. You have to have women to have babies. And you have to have women to appeal to other women. You now, have to I'm have them sure. to have child support, too. I won't weigh in on that. Right. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Sorry, I, I had to make know, an inside joke. I don't know that, but um, <laughs> I, I hear it can be quite lucrative for some women. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I... 
you got have your own thing. If if groupers want to be like a little frat, then have your little frat more power to you. I think frats are fun. But Rick Harrison, right. sixty nine yeah, cent, one dollars on rum. Certain instances. show feet. Yeah, uh, Rick Harrison says show feet. I don't think a dollar is enough for show feet, but uh, I'm pretty sure your feet's already out there somewhere. You're in a bikini. I don't know if you show your feet or not in that. I, I didn't check it hardcore, but uh, some people are are big feet people. Um, are you, you a foot do person? That thing. Ew. Huh? Yes. No, I, I'm not retarded, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, who's the most uh, besides me, of course? Uh, who is the most <laughs> who's the most uh, impressive person you've met, or the most fun you've had uh, talking to? Oof, this is kind of hard. Like I would say, because okay, and love. I've always been a huge Gavin McInnes fan. So I got to be on his show, and that was like I was really stoked for that. And then I think next that. Probably my favorite one was, well, I've always listened to Owen Troyer. So whenever I was on his show, that was, that was pretty awesome. Cause I, I love M4s. I'm a big fan of M4s. Now, what do you think, think about what's happening to InfoWars? Uh, they're kind of battling, uh, for survival there. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen the absolute latest, but they're talking about liquidation and, and all right. this stuff. So I, I don't know the latest on it, but I, I know it's up against the brink there. Yeah. I mean, th this is, this is my point. Exactly. Like, the fact that Alex can say something that, I mean, may have been wrong, may have been wrong. And and because he's, quote, wrong on something, you can just bankrupt him and you can just take him to civil court and sue him for hundreds of billions of dollars and take away a company. Like, that just goes to show where, where we're at in the country. That's scary. You know, like, I should be able to say whatever I want. Um, and, and getting something wrong, that's you think that's justifiable to take somebody's business away and f find them millions of dollars. But... I think um, I think they've got a really established base. I think they've got a lot of good people who have their back. So it's not the end, even if they do end up having to liquidate. I hope they can restart back up and just keep doing what they're doing because they really are doing a, a good, like they're, they're changing America. They're waking people up for real. And it's just, it's a disgrace, really. It's a real disgrace what, the, what we're allowing our government to do to people who may get things wrong and i think what you said is true uh even if they do you know force a liquidation or something like that i'm sure they'll i, I mean i'm not 100 percent sure but i'm fairly certain they'll be able to restructure maybe a new company name new you know studio new whatever um because they do have a lot a lot of support so um i don't think alex jones is just gonna go away i don't think owen schroer is just gonna go away or multi-time uh guest here on the kill stream harrison smith i don't think he's gonna go away uh either so um i'm sure they'll probably reconstitute uh under something but uh you mentioned Infowars uh, being one of the outlets you listen to. Um, wh what are some of your other favorites, uh, you know, growing up, coming up uh, before you got known? Um, I don't know if anyone would know this, but I, the, when I was younger, like probably in 2018, 2017, like when I was a teenager just getting into like politics, I listened to uh, Janet Parshall on Moody Radio, and that was one of the only people I listened to. And then whenever I graduated from her, I started listening to old, like I started listening to like Rebel News, um, old Gavin clips, old Milo clips. Um, but yeah, those were the Janet Parshall from Moody Radio was the biggest one I listened to. Milo, yeah, I know him well. Uh, <laughs> I've known Milo for 10 years, actually. Uh, and uh, We've had our ups and downs uh, in terms of uh, relationship, but uh, I do have to give him credit. He, I used to be a blogger uh, at the .com. That's why my email says that, and I don't write much anymore. But uh, I used to be involved in this thing called Gamergate uh, at the start of it, and um, I was one of the you know figureheads, I guess you would say. Uh, and it was because of, of Milo really uh, blowing up some of my articles. Uh, so no matter our ups and downs, I always do have to give him credit for that. For better or for worse, some people maybe maybe hate that he gave me that uh, that start, but I do I do have to say that. And and yeah, he, he was uh, you know super big there uh, for for a long time. And they reinstated him to Twitter. And we may cover some stuff. He's getting sued. Him and him and Yeezy are getting sued on some wild shit. So I may bring that up at some point later in the show. Now that you mentioned it, but uh, totally unrelated uh, to anything here now. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm looking through the chat, um, <laughs> some wild stuff. No, she's not Jewish. That was already asked earlier in the show. 
that was one of the first questions, uh, actually. Uh, the Prince Hitler question is so autistic. Got to love it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a classic. It's kind of a Killstream classic uh, at this point. Uh, now, I'm, I'm looking through. So what do you think about Biden? Oh, and I do see I, I, have, a, I have another caller here in a second. I know we got about 13 minutes left and you got some more appearances and stuff uh, tonight. But what did you think uh, about the debate? And do you think they will actually replace Biden? So, okay, so I had a flight early the next morning, so I did not actually watch the debate. I just watched the memes and the highlights later. But obviously, it was just ridiculous. It's like, we're, we're to, we're to, what is it? Was it, is it Pakistan where they fight each other in like parliament and whatever? <laughs> we're to third world levels of politics in America now. Um, obviously, I mean, obviously Trump won. I think that's just yeah. apparent. Yeah. Biden is a just a complete basket case. He belongs in a nursing home. I, I, if anything, I was almost mad at Jill. Like this is elder abuse at this point, but I mean, what else do you say about it? Um, and then as far as like him being, the, I, I don't even know how he could survive another term to be honest. Like he's basically a vegetable now. So unless they try to figure out how to like replace him with Gavin Newsom, which that seems retarded or someone else, I, I don't know what their plan is. I don't really either, and you know, much less surviving a, another term. He might not make it to the <laughs> to the election. And I heard somebody else say this um, uh, the other day. Uh, it doesn't get better when you're 82 years old or 81, however old, old he is. You don't like start increasing your mental capacity, you know, your acuity and all this stuff. That goes further down uh, as, as when, once you're on that traje trajectory. Uh, and Trump's fairly old himself, but, you know, he's sharp and he's out there hitting it. You know, there are uh, exceptions to the rule. But uh, once you start going on that downward decline, it doesn't get any better. And they had a side-by-side -side of Biden from 2012 uh, in his VP debate versus 2024, and it's like a totally different guy. You know, he's right. cracking jokes and he's qu quick-witted and, you know, sharp for Biden at least. Uh, and you know, it's, 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 it does, it's not going to get any better. And then I saw another tweet and they're like, Biden's really sharp from about, uh, 10 AM until 4, 4 PM. And they schedule all his stuff, uh, during that time. And most of his events take place during that time. And I said, well, you know, that there's something called sundowner syndrome, uh, yeah. that actually is a real thing. And I've known someone who's had it, uh, and they're sharp during the day and then literally as it starts getting darker like as the sun starts going down that's why they call it that that they start getting fuzzy or maybe they don't remember names correctly or events and dates and stuff like that uh so that's a real thing and it appears like he has that uh from the description that i read i was like okay well that sounds just like sundowner syndrome uh so anyway i that was probably the first time i really felt bad for him <laughs> watching the debate because it's like this guy should not even be out there it was brutal um now let me bring in a caller uh okay dingo let's see if it'll connect okay dingo unmute yourself you're live on the kill stream hey ralph long time listener first time caller yes of course uh hello lily nice to speak to you nice to meet you too nice to speak to you thank you um i had a, just a question about your general outlook on the like geopolitics if that was all right mm-hmm Okay. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a specific question. Yeah. So, what? What? How much of the geopolitical, like, uh, atmosphere would you contribute to racial factors, and why? I mean, the race whole that thing has been, been really destructive to the country. Honestly, like the whole BLM, we saw how they were able to just burn down our country. Um, it's a divide and, and conquer strategy. Like they're able to you know, really put people together. And if they keep people fighting against each other, because it's not just black versus white, it's black versus white and then the white uh, liberals that are against us normal white people as well. So it's just a good way of making sure that the people stay in their place and keep fighting amongst themselves so that we're ignoring the fact that they're totally screwing us over, that there's massive corruption in the government, that they're selling us out to you know foreign countries. Um, and that we're really destroying the country. So it's, I mean, yeah, it's been a massive, ma it's been massively destructive to the country, all the race bullshit. Okay. Now, what if, what if I told you that everything you just said 
was absolute bullshit. And I'll tell you like what the truth is. And here's the thing that what Ralph's like, wait a minute. Do now, I, the, <laughs> the question is, do you know that's bullshit or are you genuinely thinking that? Because that's what they all tell us on the news and everything. But like, here's a, here's a fact of life. And a very sm a much smarter man than myself told me this diversity plus proximity equals conflict. Meaning they don't have to keep us fighting. They don't have to do that. That's, that's something that's on like automatic, right? If, if you push different, races and ethnic groups together, there will be conflict, which leads you to a broader question. Do white people deserve to like have their own homeland? Well, yeah, I get what you're saying actually, but um, I mean, the, the point is like, what's the solution? You know, like at this point, we couldn't even get all the illegal immigrants out of the country, much, much less get all the people who are established. Like I consider, you know, if you've been in this country as long, basically as long as the country's been around, then you're an American. Like I consider black people to be Americans. I don't consider them to be separate from from the rest of us. Um, now, if you want to talk about the invasion of our border and all these immigrants that are coming over here, fucking go nuts. We need to get all of them out. But as far as like black and white now, black black people have been here basically it's for almost as long as we have so i can they're, they're you know they're american citizens like the rest of us and i wish they would act like it <laughs> well, <laughs> well that's good what about europe uh, i mean I, to be honest, i don't really know much about europe i know they've had like open borders for years and that's why they're so fucked right now with all these like people coming in from the middle east and whatever but i mean you know you do see like other countries like norway and sweden they they used to be safe because there weren't all these immigrants and whatever but I mean, what, what can you do? I don't really know just much about it. Europe. Just say it. Just say it, girl. Because yeah. they were a white country. Just say it. They already hate yeah. you. Just say it. Just say it. I get what you're saying. Believe me, I, I get what you're saying. No, no, no. My just, say it. Just, just say it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just say she, it, girl. She's, <laughs> she understands what you're putting down. Dude. All right. Now, what else do you have uh, for our guests here? We only have about six minutes left. Now I'll wrap I just want to say... Uh, I want to say as a very long time, uh, Killstream, let me just call myself a staple. Thank you for c coming here and fielding questions. Not a lot of people do that. It takes balls. And uh, it's been a great show. So thank you. Very cool. Thank you, Dingo. Dingo, thank yes, he, he was bullshitting you at the start. He is he is kind of a Killstream staple. So <laughs> he was being a smart ass about being a first time caller. Uh, but yeah, he is kind of a Killstream staple. And I have to say that uh, on my own behalf. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of guys, a lot of illustrious guys, uh, but sometimes people are uh, afraid to come on to the kill stream and open it up to callers and who knows who's going to say what. You have these wild super chats and, you know, is, are you Jewish and all this stuff, you know, like uh, some people don't want to subject themselves to that. So I do appreciate that. And matter of fact, I talked to I talked to Lily very early on and she was like, yeah, I'm down to come on the kill stream now, of course everything blew up and you know i didn't want to like bother you every single day about it or whatever uh but i hit you back up last week and you're like yeah i'm still in and so we set it up you said how about monday i said why not uh and so here you are and so yeah i want to give you my thanks uh as well and um i guess you know we have about five minutes left uh, if anybody wants a super chat in a question get that in now uh if you want that in now but just um i guess just talk about uh your experience um in general you've talked about it a little bit but uh has it been has it been worth it um i would say so i mean right now this is the hard time obviously like it comes in waves like i i knew how this was gonna go like i was like okay fuck, we're under attack major attack right now so give it three days they'll calm down whatever and then it'll be the new wave so we're just kind of like riding it out you know um i would say at this point i don't really know you know but but i'm young right now and i'm just trying to forge my way I always knew I didn't want to be in like in a nine to five job. I always wanted to kind of be in this, like, I always was like, oh, that would be cool if you could, you know, work in this kind of world and actually try to maybe change the country while being able to support your family as well. So, you know, this is the, this is the path that I've been thrown down. So, you know, we're just kind of, kind of pursue it and see, see where it goes. And if people like what I have to say, if they resonate with, with what I have to say, and if I can help even wake just one person up, just the normal people like i don't get deep people are always like oh you have such like you don't have any hot takes or whatever yeah i don't but i'm talking to middle america who, who are not completely woken up you know people who aren't subscribed to these little channels that are behind a paywall they just know what they see on TikTok and instagram you know so if i can get those people woke up then more power to me honestly and be a gateway really uh to, to further things right like uh you mentioned TikTok in particular uh and i've <laughs> 
I recently had a younger girlfriend. I'm 38 years old, by the way. Uh, and I had a girlfriend who was 23. Maybe it wasn't the best. Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit. Uh, I don't know. We had fun. I'll just say that. But I was astonished because... You know, we go out and do our thing and go out on a date, restaurant, cenotes and all this stuff around here in the Yucatan, Cancun, all that shit. Uh, and then, you know, we come back, hang out, whatever. I won't get graphic. But uh, then she would sit there and she would <laughs> she would be on TikTok for like two hours straight. I mean, just doing nothing but thumbing through TikTok. And I don't I mean, mm -hmm. like I, I only use TikTok if somebody links me a video like, hey, you need to see this or whatever. Yeah, I really don't use it. Mm -hmm. uh, but she would just be on there. Boom, 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 boom. It's like instant dopamine. It's like the dopamine machine. Uh, and yeah. she would just never stop watching it for like two, two and a half hours straight. And I, my mind was just boggled. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of like that uh, on Twitter. You know, I guess I, I'm kind of addicted to Twitter, but TikTok is just a whole, a whole nother level. Uh, and uh, a lot of people, you know, if they catch one nugget here or there that maybe leads them to something else, um, I do think that, that that's a valuable thing. So, Right. Because I, I think there's the people on the left and then there's the people on the right. But then there's, I, we need some bridges. You know, because we have all these normal people who are not, like I said, they're not subscribed to, to channels. They don't really, they've probably heard of Alex Jones, but it's not like they listen to InfoWars. It's not like they listen to this show. They just don't know because they're not involved in that world. You know, so I think we need more people that are like one of them. Because a lot of these conservative people, like you see, they're not very, they're not very um, relatable, if you will. You know, they're like perfect. Yes. They... They're usually like rich kids or they're kind of nerdy or whatever. So they're not relatable to your everyday just person who went to college and they have like some kind of sales job, you know, that where yeah. that's who I am. Like I, I would say I'm more relatable to the normal people because that's who I am, you know. So if I can help kind of bring those people across and get them involved, you know, on our side, then that's a win for me. So, no, I'm not, you know, going deep into like stories. I'm not like really smart, but I think I can be a good segue for people who don't know about all this shit and aren't woken up, but they're interested in learning. Well, I thank you for taking time. It's been an hour, one minute away, actually an hour on the dot and you were on the dot, very punctual, more punctual than me at times. Uh, so I appreciate you taking the time. I hope you'll come back sometime. I, I had fun with the interview, uh, as your you know career grows, as your experiences grow, uh, I'd love to talk to you again. I've done a lot of interviews. This is one of my favorite things to do. I've interviewed probably like a thousand people, uh, on this show, quite a few at least. Uh, and so you're now added to that list, uh, to the kill stream, uh, guest list i guess i don't know i was about to say hall of fame you're not quite there yet but uh <laughs> on one. thanks for coming on the show yes Come yeah, back you again soon. just set the bar now, yeah, so now, now you have something to reach for yeah you have something to reach for uh base francis yeah. thanks for coming on the show come back again soon i agree with that tell people where they can find you promote whatever you want to promote uh and uh thank you again yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm on X. Um, you can just find me. Just type in Lily and you'll find my, my thing. And then the rest of my shit is like linked to, to um, Twitter. But no, this was super fun. I, I feel ashamed of myself that I've never listened to this show before because you guys are awesome. Well, so I appreciate you having me on and I'd love to be on again. Well, thank you. And I would love to have you back and I'll ask you back. <laughs> Definitely now that you said that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so take care. Get ready. Get ready for your other appearances. I know you got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, but thank you so much, Lily. I appreciate you joining us live on the Kill Stream here today. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. There thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.